So today I have Eduardo Fraga. Eduardo has been my instructor for the past 13 years from white to black belt. And Eduardo, do you want to introduce yourself really quick? Hey, hey guys. Um, I'm Eduardo Fraga. I'm a sixth degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I was born in, in Brazil. I moved to, to California in 2008 with my family. And then I, I'm the head instructor uh, over Ralph Gracie Berkeley. Um, that's it. Yeah. So we're going to get into all the details now. Um, we're going to talk about Eduardo's history today. And so there's no better place to start than the beginning. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, you've been training your whole life. And how was it that you first got into jujitsu as a kid? Well, um, I mean, I started when I was six years old. And then I think I was lucky because uh, my, that was an after school program. So my mom, she could not pick me up from, from school. I had to stay at school and then it happened to have jujitsu over there at, at that school. And then I started, me and my cousin, my older cousin. So we did a few tournaments. And then since then, I, I fell in love with jujitsu. So I never stopped. Years later, uh, I think the my instructor opened up uh, uh, his first school in um, close to my neighborhood, really close to my house. And then instead to take classes over there at the my school, I was going to the studio, and then I never stopped. That's super cool. Who was your first instructor? And my first instructor was uh, Roberto Laje. I'm from Sao Paulo. Uh, and then uh, the jiu-jitsu came late to Sao Paulo. First was very well developed in Rio de Janeiro. In, in Sao Paulo, jiu-jitsu was not that strong. My, ju my jiu-jitsu instructor, he, he started with judo. He was a, a judo black belt that learned jiu-jitsu. Uh, and then the same thing that happened to me happened to him. He fell in love with jujitsu and he stopped totally the judo and then started his jujitsu school. Uh, we were back in the nineties. We were one of the, one of the late eighties and beginning of the nineties, the biggest school in Sao Paulo. We would go with 200 students in a competition. Easy. Easy. We would rent buses and go to the competition, and then that was great. That's super cool. Was jujitsu pretty popular in Sao Paulo? Were there a lot of like were your divisions really big? And we 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 that was not pretty popular. No, no. On the begin beginning, no, and then became more more and more. But I like that for I would go to school. And then say, hey, what do you do? I say, hey, I do jujitsu. Say, and then my friends they say, hey, what is that? Well, this is uh, martial arts, and then you use grappling and wrestling techniques. But you know, even in Brazil, people will not in São Paulo, people will not know about jujitsu. And then till the the UFC and Hoist Gracie, you know, it's, it was only a few people who would. would be trained and why do you think you as a youth you when you were a kid why do you think jujitsu was good for you why do you think you and jujitsu just like made it happen the, the, the thing about me and jujitsu it, it was all about competition i always liked to compete and then i did my my first tournament was was 1981 uh, it was great, great experience. And then even uh, at the studio, I was very, very competitive. I, I would go and try to learn and always staying late, always doing more than I, I needed uh, because I, I was very, very competitive. And then that helped me a lot with the stay out of trouble. You know, I would go instead to be with my friends playing on the street, I would go and be over there training. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I've seen your competitiveness with ping pong and soccer and video games and whatever it is, you're always competing. So that makes sense. Hmm. Um, so like that's you as a kid, but you know, what was your career up to black belt like, you know, like say maybe, you know, you were like eight with when you were at the school program, but you know, what was like your teenage years and the color belts like? And then, uh, so, so what happened was uh, when I was 14, 13 and 14, I was already helping my instructor with the little kids. Uh, that was not work, but you know, I was there learning how to teach, how to deal with, with the kids. And then I started to work at the front desk at the studio. And then I was going to school in the morning and then go to the to the studio, staying over there at the front desk. And if that was a kid's class, I would go and help. If that was a adult class, I would go and do the, the class. So I was always at the studio, always at the studio, either working or 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 training. And then that was the, from the school to the studio for years and years and then and then one day what happened is my instructor said hey you know that is is school and then and that was a preschool and an elementary school i said they need a jujitsu teacher that was like a purple belt I said, yeah i'm down and then i start to teach outside that easy studio and then and that was after that is one in school after another day hey, there's another opportunity right there and then another so on my when i was a, a teenager that was let's see let's uh, an example that was a saturday class and then i would go and my friends would be playing playing soccer on the street we stay over there you know how brazil it is huh they, everyone playing outside and doing this and i would go and then they would say, Eduardo, hey, let's play soccer, let's do this. Say, no, man, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna train. And I would go, train hard, come back, and then those guys, they were there still playing soccer and playing, doing this, doing that. And then I said, man, look, I think it's better to train mm -hmm. than be on the, of course, it's nice to play, but, uh, but you know, I was, really focusing on 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 jujitsu I, I i really felt like i had to do everything you know that i could towards that towards that the uh, the martial arts that i so i wanted to to be a, a state champion that was the goal and then i see man i cannot play i want to train i i maybe i i will play later after my practice but you know and then it was worth you know because I won the state championship so many times. I never got to the national lap, but uh, I won that in Sao Paulo. I won that so many times. That was great. Yeah, it said your, uh, I have your rap sheet here, and it says you're a seven-time Brazilian state champion. Yeah, yeah. And is that like at every belt level, like you purple, brown, black, like you just always win the Sao Paulo state? Yeah, yeah, back, back. Back, uh, that was uh, Brahman Black Belt, they were together, so that was not a brown belt division, that was not a black belt division. So, when I that was Brahman Black together, when I was a brown belt, when I became a black belt, and then they they start to do black belts only, but you know, because that was not enough people to to put on the brackets, but that was great, man. Yes, I won several in all belts. What was your game like? Like what was, as a like young, young Eduardo, what was your strategy? That was, uh, you know, my, my close guard was my, my best. You know, actually not just mine, but you know, the, the whole, uh, my, the whole team, we always had a really strong close guard. And that's funny because my my 
my instructor at that time, he was a judo instructor, and then everyone would pull guard. I said, I don't know what happened, but everybody would pull guard and attack the arm. We were famous for that. Don't, don't let, is, is that from the Lodge Academy? Don't let them put on the close guard because they will take your arm home. Hmm. And that, you know, as a blue belt and purple belt, you know, my, my close guard was really, really strong. And everyone else on the team had that game, too. Oh, huh? we all had that. Yeah, yeah. And was it like that for when you were a kid to teenager to, to black belt? I don't know. For some reason, I used to play bottom mm -hmm. way more than, than the top, you know, when I was younger. Uh, I don't know what's the, the reason, but I, we used to play way more bottom game than top. You know, but... Uh, what happened was that that was a difference between athletes from Sao Paulo than athletes from Rio de Janeiro. Because Rio de Janeiro was, they were like much better. I remember some competitions, you know, and that was later when I was a brown and black belt, you know. Uh, I remember people from Rio de Janeiro, they would come and sweep the everyone sweep the the division man they would win every 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 people every person that would come here they would win and, and that was like that was that was i say man it seems like the jiu-jitsu that they were training was different than the jiu-jitsu that we were training see we were like years and years behind and then after many years, Sao Paulo did catch up with Rio de Janeiro, but you know, it took a long, like the beginning, that was tough. Mm -hmm. Of course, there was always some good people from Sao Paulo, but you know, people from Rio de Janeiro, they were much, much better, much better. And you saw that, and you, uh, you used to tell me that you actually went to Rio de Janeiro to train. Yeah, and then, and, and then that was like, to me, that was devastating to see people from from Rio de Janeiro come to Sao Paulo and win our medals. I said, Les, man, this cannot happen. What, so what are they doing? That, what is so different that they are doing? And then this is when I, I moved to Rio de Janeiro. I said, man, I have to train there. I cannot be here because I can't. Uh, man, so my whole life is like, hey, I want to learn. I want to be the best that I can be. And I want to teach, because I was already a teacher, I want to teach my students also the best techniques. Mm -hmm. So, and then I moved to Rio de Janeiro. And who did you train with? I did, you know, what? In uh, my whole life, I stayed, I was staying in Sao Paulo. And then I need, I, I didn't ever go to any other states to visit or to do that. And then see, Rio de Janeiro was my first, first place that I went. And then I decided to go. I sold everything that I had. Every, I got all my money. And then I told to my mom, say, hey, mom, you know, I'm moving to Rio de Janeiro. And I'm going to be there as long as my money lasts. I don't care if that, I don't know if that's going to be two months, six months, one month, but I'm going to go there and then I'm uh, going to find a place to, to stay. And then let's see, with no plans to return to Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. uh, I went over there and then my friend, I had a friend over there in Rio de Janeiro that he used to live in Ipanema. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, and then this is, that was the beginning of my search to, to do any jiu-jitsu. And then because I was in, in Ipanema and Copacabana area, I found uh, the Romero, Romero Cavalcante School that was Jacaré. So, and then uh, I, I feel, if I think right now, I feel like oh, how lucky I am that I, I didn't know anything about where schools were or where to train. And then I, I end up going over there because that was great. That training over there, that was just to have the Jacare as a, as a 
instructor that time that I was in Hill, that was great. Yeah, a, a lot of people might not know, but um, Calvin Conte Jacare is the the person I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Who started the Alliance team? Yeah, yeah, yes. And yeah. it was him and uh, Fabio Gergel. It was it, actually Fabio was in São Paulo at that time, mm-hmm. and then uh, Jacare was the 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 head instructor over there. That was not even an Alliance. That was Master. That was mm-hmm. other name. Um, and then, but that was great. I remember going there and seeing Leo, Leo Vieira as a purple belt. He was a purple belt when I got there. Rodrigo Comprido, he was a blue belt. Jamelão was a purple, um, was a brown belt. Terere was a pu- purple belt. Wow. And that was a brown belt. That was tough times to me, man. Maybe that's why my ears are yeah. so <laughs> that was that was that was rough. Mm-hmm. That was rough. Stepping over there, not knowing anyone mm-hmm. from Sao Paulo. And you know how people from Sao Paulo and Hill that they have that rival. And then uh but that was great. I'm sure that was a great I mean, it must have been hard because I mean uh, I know I know you sometimes like when I was younger and someone comes in the gym, you tell me, you know, you got to go hard with this guy. So you going to heel must have been like that. Like every day it was just battles, huh? That was every day. But, you know, like in Rio de Janeiro, that was a time to me that I I didn't have to work. Mm. You know, for me, that was going in the morning, rest, training at noon, rest, train at night, rest, the other day, go run, do some weights, and then that was just jujitsu. That was no work. That was eat the barely minimum that I could to save money, mm-hmm. to pay the rent, to pay for my food, and then to wash my gi, and then to train jujitsu. That was that was it. Mm-hmm. That was great. That was great. How long was that? How long? That was there? for almost a year. Almost a year. Mm-hmm. And. and what- uh, my jiu-jitsu completely changed. That was that was a new. When I came back to São Paulo, was a a different Eduardo. Man, because the training, it's not just the training was harder, but you know, like man, I was for one year training six days a week, morning, afternoon, and evening, every day, and running and doing weights, and then so that was. Uh, on, on top of great techniques, different techniques. Mm-hmm. So when you, uh, well, I want to get into this, but um, I think a lot of people that have been training with you for even like for as long as I, I have, you know, I feel like the people that talked about you before, they, they didn't refer to you. No one t- said your name was Eduardo. You know, you, you had a different name. Can you tell people what your name was? Yeah, yeah. Say. Because uh, cause, uh, I have my nickname is Selvagem. And then I got this when I was uh, a teenager. Uh, because I got into that dog class when I was really young. And then I was always very, very competitive and then never wanted to lose. And I, was, I would always try to go try my best every single round mm-hmm. and you know like try to win no matter what and see if they, and then everybody say hey man this kid he's a wild he, you cannot stop him you grab him and then he's on your back and then you grab him and you try to put him down and he doesn't stop and he doesn't want to lose and he doesn't want to do this and then has a lot of energy man and then then oh, that was that was my nickname forever yeah, Kurt and like some of the other guys at SF would always refer to you as Salvajim. Yeah. Um, but that yeah. was from, from when I was a, a teenager, and that was like, and that, you see, to me, train with a white belt or train with a black belt, to me, it would be the, man, my, my speed would be the same. <laughs> and that was no mercy at yeah. all. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm going to get you no matter what. I'm going to try to do it. And if I cannot do it, I'm going to use everything that I have to do it. And then I see, man, that was tough. Got, I got in a lot of trouble because of that. You know, like 
all about the, the respect on the man and with older and with oh. you. <laughs> I didn't listen at all with that, you know. That was I would not care about anything. It's you young, huh? I say, man, I just wanna win, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win, and then <laughs> um so you came back to, to Sao Paulo and, you know, your uh, instructor, like when you came back, is he just like, oh my gosh, you know, Eduardo salvage him. I got to give him his black belt. Was it just like right there, you got your black belt? And then, and then I was in Hill till the end of 1994. And then I got my black belt in 1995. I think that was mid of the year, you know, but uh, my Jiu Jitsu was different, you know, and then, a, a lot of things happened on that uh, with my instructor, you know. He had a, a really big group. And then little by little, he was less on the mat and less on the mat and more leaving the, the, the students to teach more. And then at one point, everybody starts to, and then people from, from Rio de Janeiro, they start to come to Sao Paulo, like Fabio Grugel, mm -hmm. and that was High and Gracie, and then so many people came from, from Rio de Janeiro and people from Sao Paulo. Of course, they, they saw that, they, oh man, they are teaching something different than we are learning, and there was a lot of people leaving Roberto Lage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I stayed with him till 19... 1998 or something like that you know but uh on the last two weeks two three years you know I, I wasn't even going to the studio anymore because i was teaching i was doing that i had my school uh everything fell apart for him mm -hmm. that was terrible and he gave you your black belt he gave me all, all my belts you know oh. all my belts yeah mm -hmm. And so did you start, like, training with other teams? Did you start, like, going to Fabio's classes? Were you training with Hyatt yeah, at the so, time? So, so what happened, uh, it was in, in, in Rio de Janeiro, I made a lot of friends. And then when I came back to Sao Paulo, there was alliance already in, in, in Sao Paulo. And then, but, you know, I stayed with my instructor for till I could, you know. That was one point, that was no reason for me to, I, I wasn't even training at the facility anymore for years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the friends that I made over there in Rio de Janeiro, they were all here in Sao Paulo, training with Fabio. And then I, I went to the Alliance and talked to Fabio. And he accepted me over there. Uh, and that was great, you know, training, I think Fabio Grugel is one of the best instructors, very technical. His classes are always, see, top-notch, you know, instruction mm -hmm. over there. So he, so you're at Sao Paulo and you're training with, it, was it Alliance at that point or was it still? Yeah, that was, that was Alliance, yes. Okay. And um, Jacare is in Rio. Yes. And, uh, and then a lot of things changed too, too the, because Jacaré moved to, he left Rio de Janeiro, he moved to Atlanta. That was not, I don't, I don't recall who was teaching over there in Rio at that time. Uh, and then that was, I came back to, to Sao Paulo and then uh, I started to train in, in, with Fabio in 1998. What were those training likes? Uh, what were those training sessions like? That was, you know, uh, that was great. You know, Fabio Grugel had such a, a, a amazing group over there. And then um, with uh, Leozinho was teaching at that time. Terere was there. And Teles and Damian Maia. I remember Damian Maia's uh, blue belt. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Damian always so, so very Tarsis was Tarsis I remember Tarsis as uh orange belt was Bernardo Faria there Bernardo no no Bernardo no uh and then uh not even Marcelo Garcia was there 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was before Marcelo moved to, to Sao Paulo. But that was great, man. The, the, the classes were nice. Mm -hmm. The good thing about is uh, the training camp would, would, would be in Sao Paulo. So when there was all these important tournaments, everybody would go to Sao Paulo to train with Fabio. And then the camps before the, the competitions, they were amazing. That was very nice. And what were some of the competitions that like, like Worlds, um, was Pan Ams around yet? Pan Ams, yes, yes. Pan Ams, uh, but the, the biggest one was Worlds because that was in, 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 still in Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. and uh, Tijuca and then you know everyone would go to stay and do this camp for that 10 days in Sao Paulo and then we would do uh, jiu-jitsu training we would do sparring we would do a uh, uh, physical condition that was that was with everyone together that was great man. that was that was really nice who were like the training partners like every day you're gonna Go with this guy, that guy, that guy. Like oh, we would train that. That was, uh, we would go and train with Lauzinho, with Terere, with Telis, with Damien. Mm -hmm. Every day, every day. With Comprido, Com Comprido would come. That was um, with Jamelão. Jamelão would go over there and train. That was great, man. That was great. Awesome. And you were still playing your clothes guard? No, and then my jiu-jitsu changed. Changed a lot, you know. And then I was playing a lot more top game mm -hmm. you know in 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 in, in, in here my jiu-jitsu changes a lot mm -hmm. you know that was exploring way more different positions but I, I was always skinny i was 155 when i was in here i was 155 and then my whole almost when i was adult i was always a lightweight sometimes feather Mm -hmm. You know, after I get some ears on my back, I got some pounds too. So yeah. <laughs> what were some of like your big, uh, big moments as a competitor? You know, like your proudest moments. Well, the best tournament that I did was in two thousand and three. Mm -hmm. That uh, at that time, that is the international masters. They call they they at that time they would call master worlds. And I got third place. And then I lost that semifinal to this guy. Uh, and that was on the referee decision. I thought I won the fight. And then, but that was my, that day I did so many. I got third place on that, on my division. Uh, I got third place on the, at the Open. And that was great. Mm -hmm. This is, um, 2003 you know good some good times that i have here see i won the pan ams two times and i placed 10 times at pan ams yeah so but yeah. that that 2003 i never i never forget that one that was oh. it was just like your most memorable tournament winning good matches yeah yeah that was good matches and then that was uh, i was fighting super hard that was that was good but that was the third place. <laughs> but I mean, still, you know, like I'm sure jujitsu was at just so competitive, you know, and a lot of other people that are doing it full time. What, what was, uh, when did you decide to like do MMA, you know, when you were, well, when I was, um, that was, uh, 1995 that I did MMA. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have, my record is I had 10 fights. I have 10 fights. I won seven, seven and lost three. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, a magazine. And then I was going through the pages and that was, oh, MMA, 1,000 reais. I say, oh my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to win this money, you know. Uh, but that time, that was, to me, that was 100% jiu-jitsu. That was no, I didn't do striking at all. That was just jiu-jitsu. But I saw that 1,000 AI, I said, man, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to win. I'm going to buy a motorcycle. Uh, and then, you know, 
<laughs> and that was my motivation. That was just about that. At 1,000 reais, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and then I, on that first one, I won. Got the money, got the, the motorcycle that I want. And that was great. And then uh, I did. And then at that time, it was different. You know, there was a tournament. There was eight people in one bracket. So you, that time, you had to do you had three fights in one night. Mm-hmm. No matter how good or bad you were on the second, you, you had to keep going. You know, with the stitches or whatever, with a broken hand, and then you have to go to the next one. No gloves. That on that one, that was gloves. Yes, okay. but that but the rules are, the rules are they were a little bit different. You know, uh, as you could, man, you could kick the person on the ground. You, you could headbutt. headbutt. Oh, yeah, man. you can headbutt on the ground. That was that was more vale tudo yeah yeah and then so you did a couple you did mma for a little bit and it was like mostly for the money huh that was yeah that was ah. well i i cannot lie if i say that was for the just for the money because it was i like it i like it i i i like it you know the that was i like that feeling of the competition and then doing proving at that time, it was a little bit different because it, it, it was jujitsu against something else. Right. You know, that was not, people would not say Eduardo for, no. They would say jujitsu against karate, jujitsu mm-hmm. against capoeira, jujitsu against Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. And then we had such a good group over there in Sao Paulo that wanted to, to push for jujitsu, and jujitsu got all that momentum that was great that was that was yeah that, that was uh, but, uh so and then i did this first one that was three fights and then i i won and after that i had a couple of more one i got second place the other one i the other two i got second place it, it was good it was good but the, the money was just for the first, you know. If you got second, no money at all. I remember you showing me a match. You, like, took the guy down. You know, he was – you said he was, like, maybe Muay Thai or something. You took him down, and you had him in side control, and he tapped. That was – that was – yeah, yeah. That, that was – He's so scared. <laughs> that, that was – and I – over there, I, I, that match, I, I could not understand. You see, I took the guy down. Uh-huh. Land on side control, and that was like ten seconds. And then the, I see the referee pulling me, and I was about to hit the referee or do something. You yeah. know, so, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, "No, it's over. It's over. It's over." And yeah. I said, Why? Uh-huh. You know, that was that was the vibe was so. That was like I was fighting, and there was like three thousand people watching because that was a lot of people. And then everyone screaming jujitsu, jujitsu, and then you get so pumped. And then mm-hmm. that was great, man. That was great. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they don't really have fights like those anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. In Sao Paulo, you trained with um, Alliance for a long time, but you know, now you, you teach for like Half Gracie. So, I mean, mm-hmm. they're. There was something that happened, you know, that that changed your path. That yeah, that that was unfortunately uh, what happened is uh, when I met my wife, and then uh, she got pregnant right away, and then that was the end of my MMA. Mm-hmm. See now, I have my, I have Lucas. I'm not gonna go and do something crazy and or and get hurt and then I cannot work anymore. Uh, so I stopped the the and then my MMA career right there in, in 1998 when she got pregnant. Uh, I went to Alliance. I had Lucas and then I had Isabella. At one point. 
you know, that was training with Fabio. That was always very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. He would not let people train for free. Oh, even that you represent his studio, would not let people train for free. And then after Isabella, at one point I say, hey, Fabio, I cannot, cannot pay anymore. And I remember him saying, say, well, if you cannot pay, you cannot train. And then that was my, the, the end with Fabio. You know, I, uh, and then I, I felt like, man, what, what, what I'm going to do? So I was for a few months with just like was teaching. I never, I always thought that, man, you see, we have to represent a, a good team, nice team. I never thought that it's, hey, I'm going to, all right, I'm not training with Alliance anymore. I'm going to open up a, Eduardo Fraga Jiu Jitsu. Never thought. I always think thought that it's man, we have to to grow. All right. So when you're part of the, a team, you grow. I open up something. Maybe I'm gonna be good for my students, but you know, I need to learn. This is, I, that's very important to me. Say so I need to learn more than I learn. More I can give to my students. I cannot just stop over there, take care of my students. And then, man, I have to learn and then I have to pass the information to them. So that's why I, I feel like a, a, be affiliated a, 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 to a team is really important. Because you know, we have people that will bring information to you and then you're gonna give information to your students. Uh, I went to, Leozinho invited me to, to train with him. Mm. <clears throat> and then I was for a, a little bit over there. And, and then this is when I, that, that was great. I was training a lot of Demi and Maya. I was training with Leozinho. That was, that was a good team. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel, that it didn't feel right to me. Uh, I had my cousin, uh, and then he was training with Hyan. And then he said, Eduardo, why don't you come here and train with Hyan? He said, that's a great academy. There's a lot of good training for you. You're going to represent the team right here. And then one day I went to, to talk to Hyan, talk to him to see if he would accept me on as a, his student, and then he said, yes, all right. And, and, and then I started to train over there with High and Gracie, mm -hmm. Half brother. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's Half's younger brother, correct? Yes, yes. yes. And um, so were you teaching for him as well? I was. Uh. That time I had my studio, so my students would represent him. Mm -hmm. All right, but I never – taught at his studio, never, never. And but then later, you know, after a year, I, I decided to move to US. Oh, wow, so yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was up with about one year with Hyan, and then I decided to, to move to, to US. And you started teaching at Orange County for health. And then what happened is I, I was talking to Hyan, and then I said, hey, hi, here in Brazil, I don't see any future to me. You know, I need, I need to do something new. Mm -hmm. I want to go to America. I say, it's, and then he said, hey, if you go to America, you go and you train with my brother in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And this is, I had a friend. He came, we went to America to, to come. We came here together and then I started to train over there with Half in 2005. Mm. In San Francisco? In San Francisco. And that was on Valencia. That, that was, was on Howard Street. That, no, that was no Howard. That was in Valencia. And actually I was living at the studio because you know, I, I was there. I came, when I came in, I came with, without my family. Mm -hmm. So I left my wife 
-hmm. and two kids there. Uh, so I was saving up as much money as I could to send to Brazil. And then uh, that was 2005. So I was living over there at Valencia for about six months when Half sent me to Orange County. And then I told him, say, hey, Half, look, I don't speak English very well, man. See, look, how I'm going to teach there? And that was funny. That's he's like, Eduardo. No, he said, Sauvage. <laughs> The only thing that you're gonna do is, you don't need to speak English. You go and teach, and you do. You say, do like this, and then you do whatever you wanna do. And do like that. Do like this, do like that. That's it, that's it. <laughs> so I would go and teach my classes, and then I had no idea how to run a warm up, so I would do all the warm ups. <laughs> wow. That's exhausting. You guys follow, follow. Yeah. And I would do the, the whatever, warm up all the classes. No English. With, uh, with no English, no, a little, just, a little, just, a little. Enough. just enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's interesting because I mean like, uh, my first instructor, Edder, before you came to Berkeley, you know, he didn't speak any English. You know, I went to Brazil and I lived there for six months and I didn't speak any Portuguese. But somehow, like when you're doing jujitsu, it's like, it's hard because you don't speak it, but there is some kind of like communication there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can go and, yeah, that's. You're not like teaching calculus or like, you know, teaching history, you know, you can oh, get by. Well, it's not, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. You know, yeah. like you can, you can go. But, uh, uh, so what happened is that was all this respect that people, they have for the a black belt instructor. So they know that we are from other country and then they know that, man, this guy is trying to show us something that he learned in, from Brazil and that's important. And then they respect a lot this and they, they really try to understand. That was yeah, I mean, great. You're, you're the apple from the tree, you know, like that's a, uh... That's just what more could you ask for? You know, like I remember showing up to your, to your classes and Edder's classes. And I mean, Edder didn't speak much English, but you know, we were just so thankful to have him there, you yeah, know, uh -huh. all of his knowledge. And then, and then when you showed up at Berkeley, I remember it was, I think you came, did you come in 2007 or 2008? 2008, February, 2008. Yeah. And you know, I had maybe been training for like three months or something and uh i remember you walked in the gym and our minds were just like blown we were like oh my gosh like black belt from brazil it was super super cool you know we were really excited to have you and berkeley was never the same after that huh yeah no that that was great you know that was uh you know in orange county was good you know i was teaching over there for almost i think almost two years and then uh that was nice. That was nice. That was great. Good group. We had a good group, a good group of students going together to the, to the tournaments. Uh, but Berkeley, Berkeley was different. You know, in Orange County, I didn't have my family here in Berkeley. I had my, my wife and kids right here with me. So the mentality was, uh, it was, it was different. You know, uh, Orange County was, was hard to be away from 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 the family uh here for sure much much better so when we started here that was i don't remember do you remember that was like maybe 60 or 70 students and that was maybe a little more uh oh yeah not a lot of upper belts you know that was it was just you you were me the and dave as, yeah. yeah as a black belt so now we have over 30 black belts here, so this is like 12 years of hard work. Yeah. And as, I mean, you've been an instructor, you, like, for most of your life, and you've probably had so many students, and you've changed so many people's lives. Um, who, were, who were maybe some students that, like, you think back, and you're like, you know, that, that person, like, really made me proud, you know, like, your cousin, for example, or... You know, people in Brazil. Yeah, I see. 
us, we, we're instructors and we plant seeds. You know, like, you see, I see the seeds that I planted in Brazil with all my, with my cousin and all his students. You know, I see the seeds that I planted in Orange County, for example, like Sean Roberts. You know, he, he was my student. I have a, that was three or four people that when I left, they kept training. Now they are black belts. Still, they still training and they, and they are black belts. And then those are the seeds that you, you plant. And then you see, like, man, I see my students from Brazil, like doing amazing things, you know. Uh, but it, for sure, for sure here, you know, those are the, because you know, like it's, it's it's different when you're young and you're your instructor, and then when you're old and you're an instructor. You know, you change a lot. You know, you're you 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 see things a little a little different. You you you're gonna see that. You know, you're gonna see that. Like the difference on your thirties, on on your forties, and on your fifties. Things are totally totally different, and then you. You see different, even the way the way you teach is a is a way more mature right now. I'm I feel like I'm way more confident and mature that to my students than I when I was twenty years ago. That everything that you do, you try to compensate with strength. You know, like so, uh, you feel like you're not sure what to do, so I'm gonna. Use it's just like jujitsu, huh? So jujitsu is like that. So look, you have your technique and then you have your strength. Mm -hmm. If you have too much technique and if you don't have strength, or you always try to compensate. You see, look at that. I'm gonna compensate the the not that I don't have my strength. I'm gonna compensate with my technique. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's um. I think the, we have a, a great group over there in, in, in Berkeley. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm, really, I'm really proud of everyone. I'm really proud of you. You know that uh, it's not just, to, not just to go from white to black belt over there, but you know, like you are a, a instructor and one, you are one seed that I planted that you're giving this to some, some other, you're passing, the, the knowledge yeah I mean I've been so grateful for everything that you've given me and you know the 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 life that I've been able to pursue because of the knowledge that you've given me and the advice and so so much other stuff that you've done for me off the mat you know and uh, it's crazy to think you know it all started back in 2008 you know it's it feels it feels like I feel like the same white belt at that Pan Am tournament. You know, that was so much fun. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You've, you've changed a lot, you know. You've changed a lot. Sometimes it's hard to to see the change that you – but, you know, we see. I see that. I see, man. I see all those changes. And then, you know, I especially when someone decides to teach, you know, so a competitor is different than a – a teacher, an instructor, you know, that the attitude, you know, like the, the way you see jujitsu is totally, of course, you, you're still a competitor. Me too, man. I, I'm still a competitor. I wish I, but you know, the perception that you have for jujitsu, it's, you know, to, well, how I'm going to make this person understand, how I'm going to make this person understand. And then, you know, when you get older, you get that easy. It's a little, a little easier. So you understand more about. Oh, I've seen that so many times that. Oh, I know what you need. I know exactly what you need. So yeah, you can tell a lot about a person by how they train jujitsu and stuff like that, huh? You probably know people better than like their families and their, you know, loved ones know them. Yes, you can. Yeah, and and sometimes in a good way, and sometimes also in a. You know, not everyone is great, huh? So sometimes you see, oh, man, these guys an asshole, man. Oh <laughs> shit! Yeah, yeah. 
they act all nice when they come in and then they train. You're like, you're a bad person. You know, you kind of yeah, have some. Yeah. But you know, we, 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 in Jiu Jitsu, like, one of my goals is, is that, you know, it's through Jiu Jitsu, you, you see, you experience something on the mat. And then hopefully one day, you're going to be able to transfer that to your life, you know, like, so the lessons that you learn at the studio over there at, on the mat it's not just about just technique you know the lessons that you learn that is, is, is sometimes you have to pace yourself sometimes you have to calm down you have sometimes you have to breathe so this is what i want my students to learn see this is, is important to me you know this is what's important to the kids and kids they 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 have to train jiu-jitsu because they know that when they learn the martial art, when they are learning jujitsu, they are they are there to make good decisions. And you have to make a good decision, otherwise, people, they, the, this person is gonna get you. This person is gonna tap you. You have to make a, the best decision. You think, stop, and think. This is what you have to do: good decisions. So, to the parents, what I tell is, hey, we are here. We are teaching your kid to get better to take better decisions because they will need they will need that in life you know they will need that when they go through the middle school high school college hey good decisions making good decisions that they know that that will lead to the submission and you uh you actually taught you know you've been teaching kids your whole life but kind of like i'm doing you taught at a social project that had free jujitsu for kids right Yes, in Brazil, yes, I was there's part a lot of, of uh, There's a lot of social projects. That was, a, yes, a lot, and that was great. That was great. That was free jiu-jitsu for the, that was a city near Sao Paulo, and that was free, free to, the, to, the, to the people to, on that city. Mm -hmm. And then I had so many students, sometimes I would get like 60 students one class, you know, all Kids would, and then I would teach no gi because they, they didn't have money to buy gis. And then that was great. And then so from that, I have so many state champions, national champions from, from, that, from that time that I was teaching over there. That was great. That was, that was awesome. That's Some the people, that's the seeds that we, I planted. You know, I have probably 10 kids from that time, they are black belts right now. Wow. Yes, and they teach, yes. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I, I can't even imagine that. It's just, it's for me, it blows my mind when I have like a white belt and they get, they're blue or purple, but to think like, you know, this kid started with you and they're gonna be a black belt. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. And then every time that I go, I go to Brazil, they say, hey, you have to come here and, and let's go and train, let's do this, let's do that. Yeah. It's nice to, to see what they become after so many years. So, so many years, this is, man. And that, that's very, I'm very grateful for that. Those are the seeds that we plant. So, um, I mean, we're kind of at the end of, I, I really don't have any more questions, but, um, you know, I wanted to do just like a quick, just for fun. It's just like 10 questions and it's like this or that, you know, I'm going to say this or that, and you'll just say which one you prefer. And okay. it's all, it's all easy, like jujitsu related stuff. So okay. ch choke or joint lock? Choke. Nice. Gi or no gi? Gi, for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, me too. Pull guard or takedown? Ah, takedown. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you on that one. Yeah. What's your favorite gi color? Uh, I always, I always try to compete on white. I yeah. Always, yes, I like white geese. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, this one's easy, but gauntlet or no gauntlet for promotions? But I've been changing. You know. I like the gauntlet and I, did, I like the tra tradition. Yeah. But sometimes too much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely am glad. Well, let, let, me re let me do that again. Depends on who's watching. Yeah. <laughs> kids, kids are adults. Yeah. yeah. Um, at tournaments, would you rather get the acai or the pomji keju? Uh, acai for sure. 
acai for sure. Nice. Um, let's see. Do you, if you're going to watch, and we're doing a lot of this during the uh, crisis, do you prefer to watch instructionals or old videos of matches? Uh, instructional. Yeah, I think me too. Uh, pressure passing or open guard pass? Oh, pressure passing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Funny because you taught me all open guard passing. Um, sweep or submit? Submit. Yeah, for sure. Um, drilling technique or strength and conditioning? <sighs> drilling technique. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And the last one, do you prefer the mount or back control? Mount. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. That's where your attacks are, huh? Mount, mount, yeah, I'm kind of, I don't know if it's off because of my knees. When I take the back and then I have my feet over there and people are putting pressure, mm -hmm. my knees, they, all, they always hurt. You see, they, they, that's not about a submission, you know, they would not get the submission. But every time that I have my hooks and people throw their legs over, my knees, I feel like they will explode, so. Mm -hmm. Lately, I've been doing a lot of. I I rather do go to the mount. Well, I would much rather. I think I think I would hate. I, I would not want you to be mounted on top of me. I think I have one of my uh, fondest memories is you mounted on top of me for my blue belt promotion. And man, I almost tapped from the mount. It was so <laughs> yeah. bad. Well, see, that's the thing about jujitsu. You know, mount is the is one of the best positions, and maybe. What happened was the because of the MMA, you know, stay on top from the mount position. It got maybe you know like that time that I trained, I've learned some how to not look to lose, you know. But lately, I, I feel like people they rather be on side control than mount because oh man, every time I get on top, people they will escape, up escape, and then I'm on bottom. But, you know, mount is great because, you know, if they escape, they will be on my close guard. And I like close guard either. So, yeah, that's fine. Fun. Um, well, I mean, that's really it for today, Eduardo. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me in my life. You know, you've taught me jujitsu, um, but you've taught me, like, so much else. You know, just being a young kid, you gave me, like, so much to uh, – you just gave me a better life, you know, and I probably would have been – not doing as well as I am now. Um, and I know, like you said, there's so many other people whose lives you've changed. And, you know, there's so many more people's lives you're going to change in the future. And, um, you know, it's always for the better, unless you're mounted on top of us, then it's for the worst. But uh, I can't wait to see you back on the mat, Eduardo, in person. And All right. All right. So I, I just want to, I just want to say thank you. And then uh, I want to say also that, uh, you know, right now that we are not uh, over there on the mat and looking at each other and some people feel like, man, they, they, they have all this respect to the upper belts. And then I feel like sometimes they don't even want to talk. They are afraid to talk to me. They are afraid to do this, to do that. But, you know, let me tell you, see, like we, we are there to give a good jujitsu lesson, but you know, we learn every time that we step on the mat. All right, so sometimes we learn from the key that give us ideas about different ways to train. We learn from white belts. Sometimes they, they ask some questions that you feel like, man, these white belts is insane. But you know, like sometimes they, they say some things that, well, we're always learning. Every time that I step on the mat, I've been learning. So I would say that, guys, don't be afraid to talk. You know, talk to us. So we, this feedback is really, really important. Very important to us. It's very important to... No, I'm, I, I want every day, I want to get better. And that, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for doing that. Yeah, Eduardo, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, hope to see you soon. All right.